It's everlasting. Say it. Everlasting. Everlasting. When God places something perfect in us, it's everlasting. Say everlasting. Everlasting. My body's not perfect. I work it out every morning to every sweat that can come out of it, but it's not perfect. Eventually, this corruptible will die. But what is perfect is what Christ Jesus has done in my life. What Christ Jesus has done in my spirit and my soul. He's purified me. And so the, incorrupt, the corruptible must give way to incorruptible. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Think of all the men whose dreams died before they were fulfilled. Abraham dreamed of a son, but it didn't happen until Sarah's womb had died. Adam and Eve dreamed of having a son who would be the promised one, but Cain came and was a murderer. Moses dreamed of delivering Israel from bondage, but he spent 40 years on the backside of the desert where, he dream, where his dream died. The disciples dreamed of a Messiah that would liberate them, but they watched at the foot of Calvary as he died nailed to an old rugged cross. What has happened to your dream since God has given it to you? Have you just kind of allowed the cares of life, the prisons that you may have been in along the way, to take that dream and put it far from your mind? And maybe you're thinking it was just a thought. Have you found yourself in the prison, the place where the king's prisoners are confined? And there the potter's hand refines you, knits your will, your plans, your desires into the perfect purpose of Jesus Christ. Your dream seems to have died, but God has raised you up in the resurrection power that the standard of the vessel will glorify the purpose of the dream. Then Joseph's masters took him and put him into the prison a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And there he was in prison. Stand with me this morning. This morning God wants to raise up your dream. Maybe you're saying, I don't have a dream. Pastor, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm so overburdened with the cares of life, I'm just taking my day, day by day. I'm barely making it to the next moment in my life. I don't have a dream. I want you to know that God wants to put a dream in your life and raise you up to save the nation as he did Joseph. When Joseph was in the very small confinement of his brothers and his fathers and those, uh, those servants that were around him, it was very hard for him to think that the entire nations would come and bow before him. That wasn't his doing. It was God's doing. What he needed to do was to be prepared for what God wanted to do in his life. Listen, we're not responsible to make the dream come through. We're responsible to prepare the vessel that God can use us to the fullness of his glory. Bow your heads with me this morning. Maybe there's somebody here this morning that would say, Pastor, my dream has died along the way. God showed me great things that he wanted to do through my life. But somehow, it seems like everything else has come and buried that dream. I don't know where I stand this morning, but I so want to serve God and see that dream come forth to his glory. If there's somebody this morning that would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I want to pray for you. That God would just restore to you the things that the locusts have eaten along the way that the cankworm has destroyed, God wants to refine and to rebuild in your life. Is there somebody here this morning that would say, Pastor, would you pray for me that my dream will be resurrected to the glory of God? Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. Maybe there's somebody here that would say, Pastor, I've never had a dream. I'm just trying to make it, but I just want to serve God with my life. I want to give myself to God's service, to be used in my job, in my family, with my neighbors. 
this morning, God is calling to your heart. If there's one this morning that would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? God would just place upon my heart a vision of the cross that I can draw closer to him. Is there somebody here this morning that would say, Pastor, would you pray? Hallelujah. Father, I thank you this morning for your word that is true. I thank you this morning that your word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you this morning, Father, that you give us dreams and visions to glorify you. And, Father, many times you bring us to the side and you refine our lives. And, Lord, so, far, so often we take our eyes off of you and what you want to do and onto the circumstances. Lord, I pray this morning. For those who have put their eyes on circumstances this morning. Those of us, Lord, that have been discouraged by the cares of life. Father, I pray that your word will come through into their lives, Lord. And that, Lord, you will blow a fresh wind of revival, Lord. A fresh wind of strength through their lives. And that, Lord, they will be invigorated and go forth with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray this morning. Lord, you will use us to glorify you. Father, we don't want to be just a church people. We want to be a people that you have placed in different areas of the city, in society, Lord, to lift up Jesus. It is in the darkness that the light shines the most. Father, I pray we will not just come and go and leave behind your word, your prompting to our hearts. But, Lord, that we will go, saying it has been good to have been in the house of the Lord. And to, Lord, accept your challenge that you bring before us. And to see the dreams and the visions to glorify God, to further your kingdom, God. Come through victoriously. Father, I love you and I thank you. And I pray, Lord, 